Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. It is September 6th already, and it's 6 a.m. Jerusalem time, and it's my pleasure to introduce the Indigenous Watch with none other than Mary Faust and John Faust helping alongside. We're going to turn it over to you. <laughs> So thank you, Sue. Um, so we want to welcome all of you that are on the call and those of you that are calling in um, and those of you that will be watching this later. It's recorded. And we want to just welcome you again to our monthly call with the Indigenous peoples from around the seven continents. We It is our dream and our prayer that the seven continents would be represented on these calls because God's heart is for every tribe, every language, and every people from that he created and placed on the face of the earth. So, um, <clears throat> so we just are grateful for all of you and for um, many of you that, are, that join us on a monthly basis and join our prayers for the tribes of the earth coming together. Um, before we get started, I wanna just introduce um, those of you that were at the summit and those of you that joined us live stream at the summit, you, you heard me announcing a co-leader for this watch. Um, we, we launched this watch in February of 2021 and Mary Karakatua of, um, of the, the Maori and the New Zealand is has been with us from the start and from the beginning and I have invited her to join to join in the efforts to um, to be a voice for the indigenous people and to represent the ends of the earth as we know it um, the um, the Maori people and those in New Zealand and Australia really are the ones that are the, the, the tribes, the young, the tribes to have been reached with the gospel. And so um, we welcome Mary Karakatoa from um, Aotearoa in New Zealand, what we know of as New Zealand. And um, I just want you to welcome her. And you've heard her speak on this watch many times and since we've started this watch. And uh, Mary Karaka is a, is a Maori leader. And she really carries a heart for her people and many times is invited to speak on the, the culture of the Maori people and working as a bridge builder between the, the tribes of her people and the church. And so I just really hold a great value in her voice and her knowledge and her understanding of, of how we can connect the two the, the bridge building between the tribes and the church and the, um, the, the ecclesia. We talk much about the ecclesia. And so I believe we are entering a time where we must operate from a kingdom mindset and shifting out of what we have known from the past, the things that we have seen done in the former years. And we are entering a time, I believe in an era where we must shift out of the old ways of thinking. And I am so privileged and so honored to partner and walk alongside with Mary Karakatua. So would you welcome her? <laughs> she's, she's here with us on the call. Thank you, Mary, for such a nice introduction. Kia ora, everyone from Aotearoa, New Zealand. <laughs> We'd love to hear you speak a little bit more. <laughs> yeah. I like that accent. Yes, it's just so amazing. So in fact, without without further ado, let's just open in prayer. And Mary Karaka, if you would do us the honor of opening in prayer. And we're going to go right into worship as, after she's done praying. We thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you that uh, in your presence is the fullness of joy. And here we are gathered in your presence with a a faith and expectation of your presence and of your word as we share on this forum uh, this morning and this evening. So, Lord, may your presence lead us and guide us, Holy Spirit, in all truth, in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen. 
Thank you, Sue. <clears throat> what a powerful, powerful song and a powerful truth is that sons of God on the earth come alongside and worship the man Yeshua, the tribal man from the Galilee. And we just love this man, do we not? The tribes of the earth following this man. And so um, as we, as I <clears throat> want to introduce our speaker and our guest tonight from the island of Malta, Margaret Gretsch and her husband Ray are residents of the island of Malta and they hold the Malta watch here on the global watch. And Margaret and Ray have, have been involved in a house church and they meet on Friday evenings, right where they are and host a meeting on Friday evenings with their fellowship, building relationship and doing things in a new way of meeting and building relationship in Christ. Now, <clears throat> when I first met Margaret and Ray, which was in 2019, I believe is when I first met them in Herrenhut, um, learned to know them a little bit better this year when we got together at the summit in, in August, this past August. But a few months back, um, Margaret was leading a prayer call and I don't even remember what, what she said, but I remember being quickened in my spirit because I have used the text from a um, Acts 28 as the context of what transpires when when the messengers, the apostles, and those that are on a mission or on a prayer assignment to bring the good news, a message to a people. And when we read that context, it starts off with the apostle Paul shipwrecking off the island of Malta. And in verse two, it talks about in the natives received us. And it talks about how the natives were it says, showed us unusual and remarkable kindness, for they kindled a fire and welcomed and received us all since it had begun to rain and it was cold. Now, when I think about this passage of scripture, I think about Paul is the greatest apostle who ever lived, right? Himself having encountered Yeshua on the, on the, that that experience he has on the road. And so he turns and there is a true turning, the return to the heart of the father. And as he begins to go to the different regions that the Lord sends him, he, he winds up in Malta and he comes into connection with these natives on the island of Malta. So Margaret was talking a few months ago on a watch that I was, I was participating in and all of a sudden, the Lord quickened in my spirit that these are the people that I have been using as an example when I teach in the classes where I teach, the Native American Training Center where I teach. And I believe I have even referenced the scripture a few times on these watches that we do of what transpires when the messengers of God partner with God's kind intention for every people, every language, every tribe, every tongue. And so I wanted to invite Margaret to share as, as a Maltese and even some of the things that they carry there within every tribe, I wanna say there's a redemptive purpose. There is a, an, an original intention of God's heart for every people group. And so I want to say further that in verse 9 and 10, we read about the, the reciprocal honor that takes place between the Apostle Paul and the Maltese. And so let me read it. It says, after this had occurred, the other people on the island who had diseases also kept coming and were cured. They showed us every respect and presented many gifts to us, honoring us with many honors. And when we sailed, they provided and put on board our ship everything we needed. So the indigenous people worldwide, I know across Turtle Island, many times we are called the host people. 
we the people, the host people of Turtle Island. And we are known as the root people, the original people. And so within every landmass that we see, there are indigenous people that the father places. And we read about this in Acts 17, where it says, and God created us from one common blood, one common origin, and he places us on the within the boundaries that he places us with purpose. And so when the messengers come, and I believe this is part of the rede redemption that we are in a time that we said we, we are stepping in a kingdom age where we must again retrieve the kind intent of the father for every tribe, language, and tongue that we might walk in a place where things have not been done properly that we have the ability now as ambassadors of reconciliation, that we can partner with heaven on earth as we move in cadence with the heartbeat of the Father to see peoples come into the place of being redeemed and be coming to a place of relationship with the heart of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And so what happens then when the messengers come in the right premise, very quickly, heaven and earth align and open the way for glory to be made manifest on the earth. As we see in verse nine, where it says healings and miracles began to take place. And what a beautiful picture of heavenly alignment on the earth when the messengers of God align with his purpose and not come with their own agenda, but rather partner with him where God is already at work and I believe those of us that were just in Germany to Herrenhut, we saw, we saw even among the Moravians, this was their heart. In some of the, in the commissioning, they were told, don't think you're bringing Jesus to a people. Find out where he's already at work and join him there. And so I believe the Maltese and Apostle Paul, there, there was a co-laboring, truly a co-laboring and a partnership that is taking place that is beautiful, that begins to manifest the presence of God on the earth. So with that, I want to invite Margaret to share with us from Malta. Would you welcome her, please? Thank you very much, Mary. We really honor you um, leading this Indigenous Watch and what you do in Reading House of Prayer. Thank you so much. Thank you, Susan, for this platform. Yes, I want to start, um, and thank you for honoring us. Um, I want to start with when Mary asked me and my husband on, in Hernhut, I said yes, but then I wasn't feeling that right in myself. A lot of things happened when we came back. So I was kind of trying to make contact with Mary, but somehow it didn't work. And then just last week, um, actually it was after the Korean watch and the worship time, I was so touched by the worship of the South Koreans. And I was praying to the Lord. And I said, Lord, and this was um, 1 15 in the morning. And I was earnestly praying and seeking the Lord. I said, Lord, what is it? about Korea that I feel so such a strong pull to pray but I absolutely don't know how to pray and after I was battling in, in prayer and seeking the Lord and all that at three o'clock in the morning I just had an aha moment and I said okay I know what to do so I got up and I said I need to phone Mary so um, three o'clock in the morning, I sent a quick message to Mary. Mary, I know we're six hours different. Have you got time for a quick call? And I did. And Mary said, yes. So we got in touch with each other. We went on Zoom and I asked her, Mary, would you please ask me what you want me to share? And then I will tell you what the Lord put on my heart. And when I, I told her about uh, this Korea uh, pull in my heart and where I don't know where to start, she said, that's where we start. 
so um, I continued to pray into it. And um, um, as I found out a little bit of how Malta was involved in, in North Korea, and then Susan also sent a message regarding um, the outline of what happened. And then I found out that North, uh, Mort, Mort and North Korea were, um, had a, 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 a pact, an agreement between them since 1970, where Kim Jong-il, which is the father of Kim Jong-un, this present one, came to Malta and learned English for a whole year where our then prime minister, Don Minto, gave him even a villa, made, gave, uh, built him a villa, which he stayed in. And um, then in 1982, there was a pact where Morta gave, uh, uh, was given actually armament from North Korea. And we hosted four of their people, military people, to teach Morty's people how to use this thing. And I said, oh, Lord, this is an ungodly alliance. And then also I found out recently through uh, Susan Rory, and then I found out very quickly that not only that, that our then prime minister actually, um, the word used is mentored Kim Jong-il in certain ways of doing things. I was horrified and I was shocked. So um, my husband and I went prayer walking in Valletta, but it wasn't enough. So last Friday in our community, we went through some steps that Mary suggested. And I also um, asked our mentor, David Saidi from Prayer Wars International, and he agreed. So the first thing what we did is according to how we have been led even in the watches with uh, Susan and all the watches, it's not, no more time, we're in a new era, no more time to point fingers, but we identification repentance as Daniel chapter nine says, so we, the people of Morta have sinned and have done this abomination and did this ungodly alliance. And we repented in front of God. We were, were different people and, um, the Lord really blessed us. And then we repented on behalf of the government for entering into this alliance. And then we blessed our government and we blessed the Mortis nation. And then we extended forgiveness to North Korea. And it was a glorious moment, I feel, when we did this. Because when you have ungodly alliances, I felt very strongly, and this is why the connection with this uh, Mary Fausten that I agreed for this call, when there is this overshadowing and a capping of ungodly alliances over the land, and over the people, it actually stops a redemptive calling. And something very important for me, what happened during that prayer, and when one of the people were praying and confessing, and uh, because it was a very secret fact, Nobody knew in the land except for um, later on. And all of a sudden in my spirit, when this happened, I saw a big blindfold over Martha and the Mortis people. And I said, oh my Lord. So what we did, we did two prophetic acts. I had um, printed a paper for the people to know what happened, a short uh, thing. So the first thing that we did was we removed, we tore the blindfold over the Mortis people and Morta so that they may now be able to see the truth. 
what has happened and to be able to um, extend forgiveness. Because if you don't know what happened, if you don't know, how can you forgive? Actually, I, I never knew. What we, how can we do it? I, I, I couldn't even pray. I was, my heart was, I couldn't pray for North Korea. I, I, though I wanted to, but I couldn't, but I didn't know why. And the second thing is that we tore this paper that had uh, these things what happened in the land. So then after that, I felt relief and I felt uh, an opening door that now we can pray about what Paul did in the island, what actually now we, we come to see the fullness of the partnership, as Mary put it, of the native people of Malta at that time, because they showed unusual kindness. And during the night when I was praying last night, I said, Lord, um, show me more, show me more what I need to share. And he said, um, the Mortis people opened their hearts to the Roman soldier, and I don't know how many, 150, so I'm not sure how many, um, uh, uh, what do you call them now? Um, prisoners. They were prisoners being sent to uh, Rome. So they were not lovely people. They were not lovable people, but yet, Grace was extended and a loving heart was given and whatever they needed. So it is this opening up of our hearts to what is many times unlovely and unloving that I feel that God ushers in the grace to love them and to love these people. And I feel that this is what we are called to do, to love the unlovely and love the unloving. And it is in doing that that has opened the door for then Paul was taken um, to uh, uh, Publius when he was sick. And it's because he prayed for Publius when he was sick, he was dying on his, uh, not Publius, sorry, um, uh, the word says, um, and it happened that the father of Publius in verse 8, Acts 28, 8, the father of Publius lay sick with a fever and dysentery and prayed, and he laid his hands on him and healed him. We know that at that time, people with dysentery died. So when they saw this, then they opened their hearts even more for Paul. So even the... Um, uh, Publius, who was the chief citizen, um, uh, the estate uh, of the island. So when when this is done, then the people of Morta honored Paul, and even when he left, they honored him with all that they needed um, for his traveling to Rome. So this is what I wanted to share, is as we, in spite of what we see, in spite of what we see, we open our hearts to what God is doing. We honor the people, then God in return brings in, ushers in his grace, and as Mary put it rightly, earth uh, par partners uh, with heaven. We open the door for heaven to bring in the healing because then all the people of the land were healed. So um, I believe we have a, we have, uh, uh, we have uh, I don't know what you call it now. We, we have a, a, a way, a way forward how we are to move. 
to extend grace where many a times the people are not gracious to us, like the people of Korea, what they have done, you know. But when we extend grace, when we open our hearts, and in spite of everything else, we, we love them and we pray for them, as the people of Morta did, then God ushers in and comes in with floodgates from heaven. And we are to expect much because God is so gracious, so faithful. And um, Mary, I want to thank you for um, extending grace to us through the, and honoring us. And I really want to honor you and um, your Native American Indian uh, nation. Thank you so much. I, I hope I have fulfilled what you asked me. Thank you, Mary. Thank you so much, Mar Margaret, and give our love to Ray and our greetings to your team, your house church. I just wanna, there's something so key here that Margaret just shared in any given lens. And I believe this is the, the heartbeat of the indigenous watch. And as we call our peoples into a place of um, into, into the rightful role as host peoples and to see the hosting grace. There is God's grace, but there is a special grace. And I'm not saying above anybody else. I'm saying there is a grace that is upon the host people to host his presence and to host those that have come on our lands. And I think when we, when we look at the history and the many lands that have been blighted by dishonor, right? And, and many people whose lands have been dishonored by dishonoring the people of the land. And this is what I just really value with the, with the Moravians. When we, when we visit the Moravians and their legacy and their heart truly was to, to immerse themselves into the different cultures that they found themselves entering into. And so as we go into a time of prayer, there is something key here that I don't know if you caught, but that to begin the redemptive purpose for every nation, every language, every tribe and tongue, it begins with the power to forgive. We've all been given the opportunity and even the means to extend forgiveness to one another in, in, human, in our humankind amongst one another on a linear way and with, with, with other peoples and those who have wronged us in any manner. And sometimes I've had people say to me, well, I didn't do anything wrong. Well, maybe you didn't, but your bloodline remembers. And so it's time to remove the veils of shame. It's time to remove the veils of guilt off our lands and our peoples. Up across Turtle Island, and I'm sure this is the same is true for the indigenous peoples on this watch, the different indigenous people groups, there is an understanding that we come from the very soil that we walk upon. And so when we know we've been created from that same place and we know that the earth needs healing and I'm talking about, yeah, the world needs healing, right? And in order for us to move in health and wholeness, spiritual, physical, and in all arenas of life, we must, first of all, make sure that our own lands are healed, meaning our own bodies. And then we can begin to extend that same forgiveness and that same healing to, to those around us and also to our regions and our territories. And even as Margaret shared, I thought it was so beautiful that I remember she, she called me that night and she said, Mary, I don't know, I don't even know how to pray. I don't know how to begin. And I said, well, begin there. Begin where you know what to, what to lay hold of. And so in, in doing so, repentance, it begins with repentance and it begins with speaking forgiveness over 
over the things that you know to forgive. And she started out by forgiving internally and then outwardly to the Koreans. And, and then as a result, moved in a place of prophetic revelation to remove the blinders and cut away the things that kept them in a place of, of blinders. So as we begin to pray, we want to open the mics to see if anybody has anything you want to ask ask Margaret or myself or Mary Caraca. I don't know if you have anything you want to add to this, to, to this, but if any of you have any questions, just put your hand up, raise your hand, and then we'll, we'll answer them. We do want to take time to pray for lands to be healed, nations to come into a place of healing. Can I just add one thing, Mary, here, please? Um, so many a time, the Lord doesn't show us the 10 steps we need to take, mm -hmm. but he waits for us to do the first step. And it is only at the end of what we have to do that the Lord showed me this, which for me was very big, because actually I couldn't pray. I wanted to pray for North Korea, but somehow something was keeping me back and I never knew why. But then the blindfold was removed. So I just want to encourage everyone, even if you have just a little bit of a small thing, go with it because the Lord will show you one step at a time. Thank you, Mary. I'm just going to pop in here. Go ahead. And hopefully it'll help us uh, move forward with this. But um, when we started the uh, Global Watch, really started with the USA Watch, the Lord really spoke to my heart about getting what the one of the first watches to get started was the Native American Watch, which um, we're so great and glad that Mary, you came forward to be willing to do that. And I don't know how long you did that before the indigenous watch, probably at least a year. Um, but I want to draw your attention to something that I think we need to give thanks for. Um, that we all met in Heronhood again this year in, I don't know, 150, 200 of us in a room. And there's not one account of uh, COVID from it. And I believe that that was a supernatural act of God's healing. Um, and I'm that with all the distress that's going on with the typhoon over Korea right now, it's supposed to land in Korea today. Um, I think it's a sign of that the enemy is very angry. Why? Because un underneath that is, I believe, God's unlocking. And um, Margaret, you're bringing this forward, a healing for the nations. And bringing forth the redemptive purposes. There's been so many elections that we've been contending for godly leadership, and they've all been bing, 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 godly leadership. And uh, why? Because the sheep and the goat nations are, are coming into view. And... Um, uh, so we won't get any further into that uh, eschatology, but um, understand that I believe there's healing in the wings of all of that we're facing, all of those going to Korea, be strong and of good courage. Um, we're going in this with our feet, uh, with our shields locked with many people praying. So Father, I pray for the spirit of wisdom and revelation to guide us forward into this deep healing that's needed. Father, uh, help us stay out of every mouse in the corner to see the big picture and to move with that big picture where you are moving, Father, and to help us uh, uh, agree with heaven. You know the things to bring forward at your time. I thank you for Margaret's eyes to see and ears to hear this, uh, this decades-old uh, agreement. And Father, we say that there's healing coming on Malta. And I pray, Father, for not only the uh, spiritual healing, but for the physical healings now to begin to emanate forth 
in Jesus' name. Thank you, Sue. Go ahead, somebody else, if Mary Karak, if you have anything you wanna add, feel free, jump in. And <clears throat> I, would, I just wanna bring forward the um, scripture out of Matthew 10 verse 40, uh, where it says, he who receives you receives me and receives the one who sent me. And thank you, Margaret, for speaking that because at that time of Malta and receiving Paul, they received Christ there. And I, I see, and you know, I see that there's a uh, a um, significance in receiving Christ in, in a nation or in a land. And as they received and cared for um, Paul at that time, as you were talking from the scripture of the shipwreck and how the people received and they become healed, I actually. Um, just want to bless you and encourage you that you and your people and you and your nation would see the receiving again of the gospel of Jesus Christ and the miraculous in Jesus' holy name. So, Father, I thank you for Margaret and what she shared. I thank you that, um, um, that all that time again in the receiving of Paul, that that island and that people of that time received the goodness of the Father, received the anointing and the gospel of the Father, received the healing and mercy, merciful grace of the Father. And thank you, Father, that again you are coming upon them, that there will be a receiving in Jesus' name as they receive um, a new move of you, Father, that they would receive the gospel and receive all that you have to bring in this hour in Jesus' name. Thank you for their forgiving and repenting hearts that can only come from receiving you, Lord God. So let all the blessing, all the kingdom blessing that comes with receiving you come upon Margaret and her nation in the holy name of Jesus Christ. Yeah, thank you, Mary Karaka. I just wanted to share my gratitude for having left Turtle Island. This would be the second time in my life where I left the island join you folks in her and hut and when i did i met margaret and ray and this i want to say we're talking about heaven aligns itself with the earth when we function correctly i want to say our ancestors set the precedent that we eat from the tree of right and wrong when god's intention he put two trees in the middle of the garden his intention was that we eat from the fruit of the tree of life this is what i want to say isaiah prophesied and his book chapter 11 i see a day in the future the lion is tame and the snake loses his venom when i met ray and margaret they told me that since the day of paul when that poisonous viper attached to him there is no more poisonous snake on the island can we say this the poison of the serpent of the snake is the shame and so when they testify there's no more poisonous snake on the island and i've also been told by mary who travels she came into new zealand and finds the same report there no poisonous snake in new zealand these people take the leadership in actually fulfilling the prophecy of isaiah there's a day coming the snake loses its venom the lion becomes tame and the tribes live together as one jealousy vanishes harassment stops i just want to say this is the access to the tree of life we gain access to the fruit and the leaf of this tree will heal my nation. Father, I thank you for the healing that's coming to my nation and to my people from the tree of life. We break with the pattern where we continue what our ancestors set forward to do, to eat from the tree of right versus wrong. And we now do what was set by the creator to do. We gain access to the tree of life. We give you thanks for that fruit. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Margaret and Ray. Amen. Thank you, John and Mary. Thank you. Anybody else? Go ahead. Open your mic and you can release scripture or prayer or even a your hand. Go ahead. Mary, may I share something? Yes, go for it. I've just been thinking this this month of LL, and part of it's a, a picture of the preparing of the bride. And I was just in prayer this morning, um, and praying for our Indigenous people here in Australia, 
because there were many wonderful Christian indigenous people who gathered together with many others of us actually in the great hall of our parliament on a Shabbat on a Friday night of the 8th of August 2008 so it was 888 and I was saying father what has happened and I would love to ask for your wisdom because back at that time there was real communion and we actually, one Indigenous brother led communion, Peter Walker, with Warwick Marsh, a white brother. And there was this whole new covenant restoration together. And yet now we've got a government where there's this whole tree of the knowledge of good and evil and an attempt to write a new constitution that is very divisive and destructive. And I'm grieving and I feel very much like... Um, Sorry, I've gone out of my... Uh, Margaret, I, I don't know how to pray. Father, you led us in so many of these reconciliation opportunities. And now, look what's happened. And I just wondered if you could give some wisdom. And if you've seen other situations like this, where there has been the forgiveness, the reconciliation, beautiful um, time of, of oneness and holiness in this new covenant with the Lord in our great hall and in this very place. It's like the enemies come in and robbed. So could you give me some understanding? Yes, um, I think just um, very simply, I think we can always repent on behalf of our nations. And sometimes, as I said earlier, sometimes people think, well, I didn't do that. And, but yet you identify as an Australian or as uh, whatever nation you're part of. And as I've shared with Margaret, I told her, I said, well, let's start there, begin there, begin to, in, you know, like start internally, begin to repent for what your nation did to open the doors mm -hmm. for the of um, this kind of pact to be made, this, this unholy mm -hmm. alliance. And so she did that. And as she did, it opened the way for other things to flow. And, and she gained revelation on how to move forward in prayer. So that's a simple answer. <laughs> Thank you. And I guess that many of them feel very, you know, hurt, but still angry at many of the attitudes and the things that happened through the colonial era of control. And I guess one, one generation might have forgiven but another generation's rising up. And uh, I'll seek the Lord about that. Thank you. Thank you. But I guess it's that, Lord, would you show us how to proceed in this hour now, whatever that is, um, 14 years on, that we truly can be your vessels to help the preparation of your true bride and the revelation of who you are as the bridegroom and your new covenant that you give and you offer to every single one of us of every tribe, tongue, color, nation. And I pray your blessing over Turtle Island. I pray your blessing over Mortla and all these different nations. And I do pray, Father, for a reversal of what seems to be trying to arise in Australia, where we actually have a godly indigenous a member of parliament or senate who's actually saying this isn't the way to go father we ask for your divine revelation and interventions for your breakthrough in jesus name amen amen thank you hillary margaret Ubanda from british columbia go ahead hello good evening i just want to share a little bit what you have spoken about to Hosting nations, receiving nations, which every nation has received people to stay in the land. And when it comes to forgiveness, what God has been putting on my heart in the past month is this little revelation that we all know. The verse in John, I think, something 32, I can't remember the verse right now. It, is, it talks about how Jesus did not come to judge and to condemn, but he came to seek and save the lost. 
And then it dawned on me that, and that verse which says, judge not that you should not be judged. So it dawned on me that we are still in the era of that not judgment condemn. It dawned on me that judgment is coming when Jesus Christ returns. And it was a challenge to me to realize that maybe for a long time as Christians, the believers, somehow we have judged and not forgiven and we have condemned. And this comes to special nations that have been oppressed and gone through a lot of things uh, rather than judging those who have done wrong things. Our job is to forgive and to pray that they be saved. Uh, in the same prayer that Jesus said, forgive them because they don't know what they are doing. So of late it has been really an impression on me in that way that we are not in time of judging or condemning. Our preaching, our sharing come with that kind of grace and mercy. And I, that's what I'm picking from Margaret sharing and Mary's affirmation of way forward is, hey, extend mercy, extend grace. If your feet is hurting, somebody has stepped on you, just extend grace and mercy. And I think through that, we're going to see a lot of restoration and the uh, concrete reconciliation that is genuine and bring in the things that we have been praying for. So I just want to pray into that. Father, I just want to thank you for your ongoing revelation, for your word that you have given to us, of forgiveness, of forgiving, and living free of anger and, you know, things that upset us. So even tonight, we just want to forgive Korea on behalf of Margaret. Forgive other nations that are not doing well and those that are still doing wrong things that you forgive the leaders, Lord. Forgive, forgive that your life may come in this land to heal our lands to heal our people across the nation. Let your forgiveness and mercy be the song for us as we move forward. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen, thank you, Margaret. Thank you for, for adding your comments. Is there, we have maybe time for one more. We want to play a special song from the Maltese that shared with us. Um, maybe you we have one more one more prayer. Somebody has anything they want to add? Oh, you know, I just heard a word in my head that is spewing venom all over the world, and you know, like that's the word I got. So if it says anything, you know, that that's what Satan is doing, like in different nations, you know, just to to bring you know, division to the land, you know, like it's not only in America, you can see it almost all over the world, you know, to see that the, everything, you know, go to the right or to the left in such an extreme way, you know, and there is no, you know, one, it used to be a common thing that helped nations as well, you know, of course, the forgiveness that has been extended, but like, that's what, uh, you know, just that I see that. Just can, to can I, and then to nation. Can I can yeah. I answer Mary? Yes. Yes. Um, you, you know, Esther, that in Malta, um, when Paul came, he was bit by the snake, and they were waiting for Paul to die. Mm -hmm. But what was in Paul that he did not die? Because he was not a person to point a finger. Yes. He, he came with the love of Christ. Yes. And many times when, when things are coming against us, if we are not careful and we, and we don't get offended, if we 
remove offense, then when can, we can, in a godly way, pray for that person for mercy, because otherwise we will receive the, the fruit of the offense. And I believe this is what you are saying. Um, and this is what, you, yeah, I mean, this is what God is showing me right now that we can't go in, off, in the offensive anymore. It's not the time. It was never the time actually, but now even more than ever before. And we need to extend grace and, and be humble and extend mercy. It is time for mercy. Otherwise, yeah. yeah. Thank you. What I was trying, and, and you stopped me, and as the people of God, we need to be the, or say, the glue, you know, that bring nations together with the love of Christ and that's so like not pointing fingers and loving people for God's love them and as he loves us. So that's what I said, that, that is so important for us. Uh, to do it and you know uh, I just want to say something that you prayed for Mar Margaret remember with my daughter-in-law you just need to do the relationship they want me every week now to come and visit and help <laughs> yeah so just amen amen thank you everyone um I think we're at the top of the hour I'm gonna have Sue play the song that Margaret is sharing with us tonight Amen, amen. We're going to go right into communion as we end our time together. You know, communion is not just something that we do in a rote behavior, but really it, it's what brings us together as the family, right? That he made us from one common origin, one blood, all nations of men. And so we want to bless the tribes, <clears throat> the tribes of the earth every indigenous people group, and yes, the nations, the languages. We want to bless all of us as family, ones who are one in Yeshua, the Echad. And so I want to ask Michelle Rus um, Russo to lead us in a time of communion. If you're, if you're available, Michelle, are you ready? <clears throat> Yes, yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Yes, I want to bless the Lord. Um, I do. I just want to add the scripture too as I enter into the communion. Um, is First Peter four, and it's verse eight, and it says, "And above all things, have." fervent love for one another, for love will cover a multitude of sins. And I just thought of that scripture as I listened to Margaret and everyone's words of wisdom and revelation. And I just wanted to thank God for how the love that he gives us, the love that the father gave us, by giving us his son, his, his son is a, the expression of his love and, it, and his son covers a multitude of sins. So Father, we just bless you. We thank you for your, your gift of love, your son. And we remember him in this communion time. We take this covenant cup and we just, Thank you. And we say Barukata Adonai Eloheinu Meleka Alam Bore Boria Gafen. Blessed art thou, Lord our God, King of the universe, who creates the fruit of the vine, who is the vine dresser. And your glorious son is the vine. And we are the branches of that vine, covenanted in. And we bear the fruit of Holy Spirit, Lord. May we bear the fruit with with just the love that that you would just pour out through us. And we drink this cup together now. And say thank you, Father. And now we take the bread, the bread of his presence.
And we say, Barukata Adonai Elohim Malek Olam, Amotzi Leke Meinharetz. Blessed art thou, Lord our God, King of the universe, who brings forth a bread from the earth. The bread, the living bread, who is Yeshua. The manna from heaven, the provision he was, the sacrifice he was in our place. And we thank you so much, Father, and we thank you, Yeshua, as we remember you. And let us take the bread together now. Lena, would you end us with a blessing? Close us off with a blessing. Our Father, we come before your throne. Father, we are before your throne. And um, from this place, Lord God, I release a blessing to the nations, Lord. I release a blessing to all those that, um, remembering that you have set the boundaries of every nation and um, you have given uh, the names that every family carries their name comes from you. Um, we have yet to really understand what those verses mean, Father, but we know that you see and acknowledge the different tribes and how you love the different tribes and how we each reflect uh, you in a different way. And Lord, I, I bless, Lord, um, I bless this reflection of you in every tribe, Lord. We bless it, Lord God. Um, we ask for increased clarity and increased purity, Lord God, um, of this mirror that we are um, that reflects your image. Let there be greater clarity and um, greater joy in reflecting and walking um, in your image, bringing you back uh, glory, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, everyone, for joining us on this month's Indigenous Watch. Thank you again, Margaret, and your um, transparency and willingness to share some of those intimate moments with your people on the island as you prayed and sought the heart of the Father on how to pray for, with us tonight. Thank you so much. And thank you, Mary Karaka, for co leading and Sue Rao for being our. Um, coordinator tonight. Thank you, everyone. Blessings. Thank you for inviting. Thank you, Mary. Thank you all. Thank you, Sue. God bless you all. Blessings. God bless you. God bless you all.